can do now, Mr. Carlin. Are you certain your wife is in there? I saw her. I, I saw her go in and... Well, uh, a minute it's late of this, I... Go with him and sit down. Anybody have any idea how it started? Hey. How did it happen? I warned Mrs. Carlin many times I did not to smoke her cigarettes out there. She spent a lot of time in the stable? Yeah, she never went to bed without saying goodnight to Blue Boy. That's our new coat. You couldn't save him, huh? No. The pharmacist started in his store. I just got your message, Rod. How did it happen? I don't know, Mike. She went into the stable. Well, I looked around a few minutes later and it was burning. By the time I got down here, it was too late. Poor Barbara. The diamonds in the compact, are your wife's? Yes, theirs. Come on, Rod, let's go. Hey, Mr. Carlin, your name is George. That's right, but we can both identify the diamonds in the compact that's belonging to Mrs. Carlin. Are you a friend of the family? Michael was on. Also, Mr. Carlin's uh, attorney. Mr. Mr. Uh, that's enough now, please. Mr. Carlin's had all he can take. driver just keep following the procession whose funeral is it lady mine let us not mourn her passing rather rejoice in the way she lived she was respected of her friends and beloved of her husband fine time to tell me and my dear husband looks so stricken I wonder if he really believes I'm in that casket. Evidently the servants do. Mrs. Haskins is genuinely upset. And dear old Blinky is crying. Porter? Of course. Well, I like a butler to be imperturbable. Mike looks as if all the cares of the world have fallen on him now. Good old dependable, responsible Mike. And how sweet of George to come. I wonder what he's thinking. If he is thinking. But Rod, why, he's almost convincing. Now they're satisfied. They've done what's expected of them. They can all go home now and forget me, except Mike. And he'll have to attend to all the details, as usual. May I ride back with you? Yeah? Well, yes, yes, of course. Now, uh, where shall I drop you? I say, what? Barbara. It's all right, Mike. I'm not a ghost. Hmm. For death. <laughs> now, what sort of silly talk is that for a realist like you? Nothing's dead except your engine. Go ahead, start it. What kind of morbid joke is this? Where have you been? When now, did we just, just a minute. Don't you get hysterical. One thing at a time, please. Firstly, it's not a joke. Secondly, I've been at Arrowhead. And thirdly, I don't know whom you just buried. Can we start now, please? That's all very well, Barbara. But the funeral... Well, I don't mean to seem ungrateful, but it was poorly managed. Why hire limousines when I have three perfectly good Cadillacs and a Lincoln sitting at home? The mortuary offered three rates, each inclusive of transportation. Oh, blasted Barbara, that's beside the point. What were you doing in Arrowhead when you were supposed to be dying here? That's a reasonable question. I drove up to think over this business of Rod and me. I don't want the divorce, but... Well, 
Anyway, I got back last night and read of the fire and my untimely end. Well, then why didn't you put a stop to this farce at once? Mike, if somebody's tried to kill me, I want them to think I'm dead, for the time being, at least. Kill you? Oh, no, Barbara, it was a... An accident, so I hear, but somehow I'd like to make sure. Oh, poor Mike. It's cruel of me to put such thoughts into that well-ordered mind. Perhaps I am a little morbid. Funerals always depress me, especially my own. I thought Dr. Foster spoke very well. The chapel was crowded. There were lots of beautiful flowers. Look. Uh... <laughs> Cousin Margaret. White roses, my allergy. That's really carrying a few to the grave. But then, nobody expected me to smell them. Oh, Barbara. My dear, shouldn't we go right up to the house and let everybody know? Why must we see Rusty first? Mike, you did bury somebody today, a woman too badly burned for recognition. And Rusty wasn't at the funeral. Barbara, do you think it may have been Rusty who died in the fire? Yes. Well, then this is a matter for the police. What is? Another woman buried in my place? Oh, Barbara, I have the greatest respect for your efficiency. I know you like to do... I, I, I know you like to do things in your own way. But after all... Rusty, are you here? Rusty? Oh, I never realized she had so little. She never let me come here. Really, place. Just like her, half child, half grown up. I should have made her stay at school with girls her own age. Tinker and misconceptions of psychoanalysis. The neurotic personality. How she tortures herself. What ever made her like that? Oh, the shock, I think, when Dad died. He'd never prepared her, Mike. The whole thing was so sudden. And you weren't much of a help standing there mouthing that cold legal language. There has never been a legal adoption. There is no up-to-date will. Under the circumstances, Rusty has no share in the estate. You see, Rusty, legally as well as factually, you were not his child. Frankly, I'm rather surprised not to find Mr. Carlin's papers in better order. But I suppose none of us likes to face up to the inevitability of our deceased. I... Nothing's different. We thought we were sisters. We're not. You call it nothing. Dad should have told you. But he loved you so he didn't want to hurt you. Anyway, what difference does it make? It makes some to Dad. I mean, your father, our father, my father, killed himself. You hear what Mike said? He had nothing. Your father didn't love me. He was sorry for me. Since has there ever been the slightest difference in his treatment of us? We've shared everything equally and we always shall. It shouldn't be difficult for me to accept charity. Evidently, I've been getting it all my life, Rusty. It's true, isn't it? Darling, don't be sorry for me. In a way, I'm glad. At least I'm beginning to understand why everything's gone wrong with my life. Why I've always lost. But you haven't lost anything, dear. Oh, haven't I? What about Rod? I knew him first. But you just wouldn't let him alone, would you? And now you're engaged to him and just as sure of him as you are of everything else. Well, of course, you and Rod were friends, but... Well, you and he were never in love. Sure again, aren't you? Sure Rod loves you and sure Dad loved you. You're so smug because you have everything and I have nothing. Don't tell me how I feel about Rod. And don't be so sure of anything about me. And I mean anything. Still one big happy family. Well, big anyway. Poor Rusty. She's gotten it into her head that Dad cared more for me than for her. And she feels you do, too. Well, I wouldn't want it to get around, but uh, I do. Why else would I want to marry her? Now, don't tell me it's for your money, because that's so obvious. Oh, I'm worried about Rusty. 
She's a neurotic little girl and she's in love with you. Well, now, what's so neurotic about that? So are you. Rod, have a talk with her. Try to make her understand that she's going through a stage. All right, I will. I'll talk to her like a Dutch uncle. Just as soon as I brush up on my Dutch. Oh, Rod. He never did, of course. You know how Rod is about facing problems. Like, uh, your father? Probably one of the reasons you fell in love with him. Nonsense. Rod's carelessness has always infuriated me. He should have talked to Rusty. But I guess she got over it in her own way. She moved out of the house, though, down here when the gardener left, and wouldn't accept a penny more than the small allowance Dad had arranged when she started school. You know, we based our identification of the woman in the fire on the fact that she was wearing your necklace. I suppose Rusty... Oh, yes. She was free to wear anything of mine. And I'm sure Rusty owned a compact like the one in the fire. My love, lovely, sure. What do you put the same inscription on? Two of them? Why not? When a man like George gets hold of a poetic sentiment, he never lets go. But did Rusty know George that well? I mean... Uh... I know what you mean. If not for me, she might have known him too well. By the time I found out Rusty was going to spend a weekend with a prize fighter, it was almost too late. I broke into one of the few pleasant days of my marriage and made Rod burn up the road to George's training camp. Fastest backseat driver I've ever known. Come on, dear. Now, why is a woman always in such a hurry to save another woman? Hey, suppose he's beating her already? Is that the guy I'm supposed to poke in her nose? <laughs> that Rusty isn't even here. Oh, no. Well, all right, so I was wrong. Have to be some of the time. Law of averages. You were wrong before the law was passed. <laughs> oh, George. You're such an uninhibited sadist. Is that good? It's exciting. Yeah? Maybe that's what women admire in me. I've always wondered. Barbara, I hate putting things bluntly, but uh, isn't this none of your business, to put it bluntly? My sister's welfare is my business. All right, what's my attitude? <laughs> Enraged, indignant, reproachful. You're ridiculous. Look, you better stay out of this altogether. Just, just stick around and admire the scenery. Yeah, ain't nature grand. Well, hello. What do you want? You to come home, of course. Well, don't tell me you're her mother. No, I always look this way after a long drive. I'm Rusty's sister, but not legally. Well, why didn't you tell me about her? Why didn't you tell me about him? Why should I? Oh, now, girls, don't fight over me. I hate violence. So I noticed. What do you mean by bringing this child up here? Oh, now, wait a minute. You better wait. A couple of years? There isn't anything wrong. We have a chaperone. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. My secretary is here. I'd hate to see her shorthand. Well, in spite of the uh, chaperone, I shall have to insist that you come home with me. And I shall have to refuse. Oh, Mr. Manley, won't you please send her away? Well, I, I hate to be rude. A after all, Rusty and I planned a very gay weekend. Reading poetry and listening to music. Oh, why don't you pick on somebody your own size? Well, what are you weighing at? I think I could make your weight, Mr. Manley. Well, I'll have my manager arrange a match. Fine. But make it someplace a little more intimate than Madison Square Garden. Oh, wherever you say. And I'll fix it so the referee don't break the clinches. George! You've done it again. You just can't stand my having anything of my own. Oh, Rusty. You've always I... taken everything away from me, and now you've taken him. Well, someday I'll have everything, and you won't be able to take it away. 
the beginning of the end for Rod and me. He went for Helen in the big way, and the only way you can go for a girl like Helen. And in the meantime, I was stuck with the fascinating George. Perhaps Rod misunderstood you and George. Rod didn't need excuses. But anyway, Rusty was safe, for the time being at least. Of course, she hated me more than ever for showing her the kind of a heel George was. I suppose my method was stupid and cruel. No, no. Stop condemning yourself, dear. You did it for her. I've always hoped Rusty would come to realize that. But now, if she... If anything's happened... Rusty! Oh, you're all right, oh, my dear. We were so worried for you. I am crazy. Oh, I didn't mean to startle you that way. No, it's quite all right, Rusty. There's been a terrible mistake. It's no mistake. It's a plot. You're trying to drive me insane. You go to any lengths to torture me. Even a grisly joke like this. Rusty, please understand. Get out of here, both of you. Get out of here. But Rusty... Get out! I'm sorry you're alive. I wish you were dead. If I remember correctly, Mike, you seem to doubt that anybody would want to kill me. That girl's beginning to sound irrational. Oh, don't ever say that again, Mike. There's nothing like that wrong with Rusty. Well, I'm sorry, but there's something wrong with her. Hadn't I better go in alone first? You saw what a shock it I was. I wanted to be a shock for Rod. Well, do you think that's fair? No, but since when have Rod and I started being fair with each other? But there's no point, after all. What do you expect? But there is a point. Good afternoon, Jeffers. Good afternoon, Matthew. Good afternoon, Jeffers. Good afternoon, sir. You'll find Mr. Carlin lunching on the terrace. Oh, thank you. At least he wasn't surprised to see you alive. Well, at least we'll never know. <laughs> yes, operator, Miss Helen Lawrence. Waldmere Hotel, Las Vegas. Can't you hurry it, please? Shh! It's long distance. Oh, What is it you're trying to control, Rod? Joy or disappointment? Oh, don't. It's all been a mistake, Rod. Barbara, Barbara, honey, you're all right. You're... My desk doesn't seem to indulge your appetite. Strangely enough, it hasn't dulled mine either. May we join you? Sit down, Mike. You know I never use the formal linen on the terrace. Oh, stop it, Barbara. Why won't you let me tell you how wonderful it is to see you alive? Sit down and finish your lunch. Darling, under the circumstances, aren't you being a little stiff? Is that a pun? Oh, for heaven's sake. What I mean is, you've come back. You're so cold. Not as cold as I might have been. Baby, just this once, can't you unbend? Blame it on rigor mortis. I insist that you stop this gruesome joking. You're quite right. Murder isn't funny, is it? Hmm? Barbara has rather unsettling ideas about all this, Rod. I have an idea that somebody tried to kill me. I have another idea. It might have been you. Do sit down. It isn't such a far-fetched notion. Mike told you that the property settlement made out of court prior to the divorce action would take six months. But Barbara, Rod agreed to all that. Reluctantly. Remember how upset he was he couldn't start the divorce immediately? Upset, yes, but murder. You practically threatened to one. What? About a week ago, I was in my room alone. George had just called, and... Of course I want to come up, George. Of course I want to see you, George. Oh, you 
darling, I can hardly wait. Yes, we'll have a wonderful time all day. I've got to hang up now, George. Somebody just came in. All right, Jordan. Bye. So you really think I mind? Yes. Silly, isn't it? Very. Pity you hung up. I would like to have spoken with Ellen. Oh, I'm driving up to George's training quarters. I'd love to take your message. Thanks, Arthur. You're a grand sport, but uh, I'm driving up myself. I find the lodge a charming setting for romance. Don't you? Yes, and uh, isn't it lovely weather for a misunderstanding? Divine. By the way, I'm taking the roadster. Uh-uh, I am. Uh-uh, you had it yesterday. And I want it again today. Well, you can't have it. Look, I... Well, there's no reason why we can't drive up together. That's right. After all, we're so sophisticated. Yes, aren't we? understand why George isn't bored with that. I should think the other fellow get awfully tired of it. Well, now, don't get George wrong. He's quite an intellectual. Huh? Underneath all that bulging muscle is... What? More bulging muscle. What's he... I haven't got. No, don't answer that. I'll tell you what. I'll just uh, tag along and watch his technique. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Helen's waiting for you. You seem to be doing all right with your own technique. <laughs> well, uh, so long. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. That gives me plenty of leeway. you two together. What do you want? Exactly what I was going to ask you. Oh, ignore him, George. This is his idea of humor. Humor? I find my wife with another man and she calls it humor. All right, I'll laugh. <laughs> Read it. You heard what the man said? I'll take care of him later. Hey, you let go of her. Look, I'll do as I please. She's my spouse. You can't call her that. My jealous rage, I might say anything and heaven knows what I might do. Hey, I'm supposed to commit the violence. Yeah? Let's see you laugh your way out of that. Now, look, George. George, that's just my way of kidding. Well, this is George's. Now, look, you couldn't expect me to take a thing like this lying down. Hey, I was protecting you. Oh, of, of course. Thank you. You think he's all right? Oh, uh, sure. I pulled my punch. He'll be all right in a couple of minutes. Oh. Hey, hasn't got a weak heart, has he? No, a weak head. You better take him into the house. Carry him in. Oh, put him on the bed, George. Oh, George. You better go dress or something. I'll take care of him. Oh, yeah, but what if he gets tough with you? I'll have to defend you. Thanks. You've defended me enough for one day. You better get dressed before you catch cold. Oh, yeah. Outlawed the atomic bomb. Are you all right? <sighs> splendid, splendid. There's no tonic like a right hook to the bread basket. Oh. Anyway, what do you care? Well, I... Well, I don't, of course. If you brought it on yourself, you know. Why don't you go and, and compliment George on another brilliant knockout? What are you sticking around for? Oh, darling, what's happened? Why, don't you know? He tried to crack George's knuckles with his stomach. But I've never known you to fight. He still hasn't. Haven't you any sense of decency? You feel that's a subject you're qualified to discuss? Am I being insulted? Would you know? <gasps> oh, my God! Oh, no. Girls, girls, take it easy. <laughs> Keep going like that, you'll dig your own grave. Ow! Oh, manhandling her again, huh? Oh, look. 
That crack about me digging my own grave didn't register at the time. But since the fire, it keeps coming back to me. Oh, for heaven's sake, Barbara, that was just a figure of speech. Really, Barbara, I think you're making a mountain out of a molehill. That's no molehill. That's my grave. Stop talking about graves. It gives me the willies. Oh! Oh, oh dear, Mrs. Haskins. <laughs> Didn't Jeffers tell you that oh, I was alive? Oh, yes, but seeing you here. Oh, praise be, you are alive. I thought he'd killed you. Well, here's mud in your eye. Perhaps I shouldn't have said that either. Mrs. Haskins, you hinted that Mr. Carlin killed his wife. I didn't hint it. I said it. And now that I've said it, I'll say it again. Go right ahead. I'm getting used to it. Uh, uh, I'm very sorry to have upset all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Carlin. We're suddenly happy to have you back alive. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Haskins, whatever made you think my husband had murdered me? My own two eyes? Only two? You and that hussy. That Helen Lawrence. I saw you. Night before the fire. It was Jeffrey's night out. And I was late locking up. Mrs. Carlin was staying at the town place. But I thought she'd changed her mind. Like she does sometimes. Until... Don't be silly, Helen. No one can see you. All the servants have gone to bed. Goodness knows. I hate the people. But I know my duty to my mistress. And it made you drive me up here, darling. But I just can't wait to see it. Well, I shouldn't have mentioned it. I had it reset. But... Oh. One gets so much out of books. I tell you, I plan to have baguettes on either side. Lovely. Well, if you prefer, I can Oh, have... no, Rod. You manage things so marvelously. I want to leave everything to you. What's in that box? Necklace. Barbara's. May I see it? Surely. How exquisite. Let me try it on, Rod. I've never had a diamond necklace. My girl, you must have been raised in utter poverty. Look at me. Uh, no improvement. You were ravishing before. No, let me pretend it's mine for a minute. I want to pretend all of this is mine. Darling, you're home so late. Did you have a hard day at the office? May I mix you a drink? Or shall I get your slippers? You poor boy, you have such heavy responsibilities. Who, me? I suppose I'm being silly. No, you're not. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I'd kind of like to have someone feel that way about me. I could, but not until we live here. We never shall. This is Barbara's home. Oh. Well, wherever we are, we'll be together, and that'll make it wonderful. I do hope it'll be soon. Well, there's all that financial business to settle up first, and then the legal proceedings. I hate waiting. Well, I'd do anything in the world to hurry it up. You would? What are you thinking? Oh, I'm so ashamed. Please don't ask me. How wicked of me. What were you thinking? I love you so, my darling. I guess I'm capable of wishing anything that would bring us together sooner. For one terrible moment, I almost wish that... that Barbara would have an accident. Tell them. Oh, don't be so stern, Rod. You know perfectly well that Barbara lives dangerously. She rides a lot. Very recklessly, too. Let's change the subject. And she swims. Really, Helen? Oh, darling, I just can't bear to wait. Forgive me? What is it? Barbara. I'd better go. No, hurry. You go to the stable first. She always sees her favorite coat before she goes to bed. Always? Every night. It's an odd habit. She goes to the stables every night? I saw at once what that evil creature was planning. The accident would happen in the stable, and she'd persuade Mr. Carlin to help it happen. Oh, what utter rot. Don't you see how this woman's warped mind has distorted the scene? Nothing was said about murder. And besides, if you believe all this nonsense, why didn't you go to the police? Once a killer, always a killer. 
I didn't want to be your next victim. Well, you may well be my first, Mrs. Haskins. Ah! That woman discharged after all this is cleared up. Mrs. Haskins will continue as our housekeeper. Over my dead body. Rather than mine. Oh, Barbara. Well, Rod, it looks as though you're our only suspect. Barbara, dear, have you forgotten how Rusty talked? Oh, nonsense. I won't hear of Rusty having anything what to do. What about him? What's he doing here? What is he doing here now that Barbara's supposedly gone? Before you hang me for this murder, I'd be interested to see George's reaction. Oh, you're wasting your time, Rod. George doesn't scare easily. Just a moment, sir. I'll announce you. I'll announce myself. Idiot. Oh, it's a rare place to see him in that position for a change. I guess George's resistance is all physical. Yes, sir. Well, I'll ring for help. Allow me. I'm all right, George. Yes, just relax, old man. Uh, we seem to be burying everything else. What do you say you and I bury the hatchet? Have a drink. Oh, I never touch this stuff when I'm in training. Well, if it wasn't you, who did we bury? It's whom did we bury, George? Oh, yeah. When a pronoun is the object of a verb... Rod, did Helen ever return Barbara's necklace? Good heavens! I'd forgotten she ever had it on. And when I saw it burned, I naturally thought of Barbara. Wishful thinking? Then it could have been Helen. What could have been Helen? George, did Helen have one of those compacts, too? Well, yeah, but what's this all about? Well, what are you getting at? What are you talking about? Yes. Yes, I placed a call for uh, Helen Lawrence. Oh. Helen isn't registered. She never arrived. It's bad for her. Poor Helen. She always wanted to be in my shoes. You mean the body in the fire, Helen? <laughs> but it couldn't be. She said that... What did she say, George? Well, she said that... You killed Helen. You killed her and I'm gonna kill you. No. Oh, let him come. My day wouldn't be complete if this didn't happen at least once. Oh, no. Wait, look, George. <laughs> Our lemon, sir. Helen's dead. Helen's gone, and I loved her. You loved Helen? And why'd you make passes at Rusty and Bob? Oh, it was all Helen's idea. When Rusty went for me, why, she said the kid smelled the dough, and maybe your family would buy me off. Then you two came along, and she got a bigger idea. She figured that by playing you both. Maybe one of us would score. Then when I found out that you were just using me to get to your husband, why, Helen concentrated on him. Barbara, is that true? Is that why you... Oh, never mind that now. George, why do you think Rod killed Helen? Well, it's with her the afternoon before the fire. She was packing to go to Las Vegas. Oh, but Helen, I don't want you to go. Why do you have to? I told you, darling, to give Rod a chance to miss me. Oh, but I'm going to miss you, too. Sorry, Hanson, but business is business. Rod's got to think I'm through with him, unless he does something I want. Well, what is this thing you want him to do? Honest, Helen, sometimes you scare me. Isn't that silly? 
poor little me scaring great big you. Oh, when you talk like that, I know you're up to something. What is it? Look, George, you've got a lot for me, but not everything. You mean I ain't refined enough? I mean you aren't rich enough. Oh, I can take care of us. But for how long? You'll never make the championship, and I want you just as you are. Not a punch drunk son with wide ears, a broken nose, and bells in your head. Oh, I'll, I'll quit the fight racket. I'll have a career. Just leave everything to little Helen and you'll have a career. Managing the car in the state. Oh, but Helen, I can't stand it any longer. Every time I think of him... Well, don't think. You know how thinking upsets you. Yeah, but I'm going to tell him. I'm going to bust this whole thing wide... wide open. Oh, no, you're not. Listen. Last night I told Rod I wouldn't wait. That it's got to be now or never. He's not the type that can stand never. That's why I want him to see what it's like. Without me. But, Helen, you can't nail him yet. The, the divorce... There isn't going to be any divorce, George. Barbara's going to have an accident. You mean he's going to kill her? There you go, thinking again. Oh, but Helen, we can't let him do that. Can't we, darling? What's it to us? More money than we can ever spend. Each other. Oh, Helen. <laughs> that dame could make a lunatic out of a guy. And you're here to prove it. Well, that's why Helen went to the stable. To make sure Rod didn't slip up. Here we go again. Just a minute, Barbara. Perhaps Helen went there to do the job herself. Well, maybe this muscle-bound meatball is telling a little story to divert suspicion from himself. If Helen wanted Barbara dead, why aren't you the logical one to do it for her? Well, if, if I'd have done it, would I have come here to get you to pay me to keep quiet? You mean you actually came here for purposes of extortion? Oh, no, nothing violent like that. I got to thinking at the funeral that if he paid me to keep quiet, Helen wouldn't have to marry him. George, don't you know there's a law against blackmail? Okay, go ahead and call the cops. I don't care about anything now. Well, one way or another, Rod, everybody seems to be out to get you. Maybe you are getting a raw deal. Thanks for the sympathy. But you still think I tried to murder you, don't you? How will you decide to send for the police? Tell them I'm at the club. I'm moving out. You might as well beat it, too, Bubblehead. I'm not going to pick up any loose change around here. Barbara, what about calling the police? I want to think. But if somebody did try to kill you? With Helen gone, Rod would have no reason to try again. Neither would George. There are two prize suspects. Oh, I don't like it. Somebody might try again. I have to get back to town on the idea of leaving you here alone. No, I'm not really alone, Mike. The servants are here. Yes, of course. Well... If you do decide to call the police, let me know. I'll be near the telephone. Hi, Rod. Ah, Mike. Give me a lift, will you? My car's down at the cottage. I'm glad to. How many will there be for dinner, madam? Just one. Thank you. Thanks, Rod. Right. Don't worry, I'm leaving. Rod, what have they done to you? Oh, it's it's nothing, nothing. Nothing. Well, that's what they usually say. Hey, as a matter of fact, it's quite a lot, and it hurts like the dickens. You're coming right in the house with me. Oh. I'm oh. going to put something on those cuts. That well, might help. What happened to you? Oh, your prize fighter friend gets upset over the most trifling things. Just because he thinks I murdered the woman he loves. Oh, the woman in the fire was Helen Lawrence. Oh, was it? Well, that's an interesting reaction for a change. Aren't you surprised to discover that George loved Helen instead of you? Silly. For me, George was merely a transference. Huh? I tried to transfer your image to his. It didn't work. 
You're the only one who's locked deep down in my libido. Oh, look, kid, I... Oh, don't call me a kid, Rod. Don't be afraid of me. Don't try to hang on to your resistance. Well, what resistance? I... That's right, Rod. Release your inhibitions. Oh, no, that'd never do. That's where you're wrong, Rod. Free yourself. We belong to each other. We always have, you know that. And now you know that I know it. Look, uh, you haven't got a drink around the place, have you? I... You won't need a few to escape like drink once you've got me. Barbara's done that to you. You really hate to drink. I do? Of course. You're punishing yourself masochistically as a result of Barbara's aggressive domination. Why are you afraid to throw off the chains on your unconscious? Oh, now look, Westy. You're a nice girl. I'll... Let's just keep it that way. I'm married to Barbara and... Well, she's my wife. Well, so, by an odd coincidence, I, I happen to love her very much. You don't love me? Oh, Rusty, you're a child. A child, am I? Remember the night of the Greg party when you and Barbara had that big fight? You mean about the note? I took it. She wouldn't believe you left it. She said you were shiftless and inconsiderate. You took it? And those papers you would have put in the safe deposit box and lost? You took them? Does that sound like a child? Doesn't that sound like a woman who knows how to love? It sounds just exactly like what you are. A mischievous brat. Why, you must have come between Barbara and In me. In a hundred different ways. Of course I have. I knew you hated her. It's no use you trying to hide it. You see? I know you tried to kill her. What? It's all right, Rod. I understand. And you can trust me. I'll never tell. Tell what? What I saw the night of the fire. You at the stable, hiding in the darkness. Holding that riding whip. Slapping the loaded handle against your palm. To see how it would hit. That's a lie. It's a truth and you know it. I saw you. All right. Suppose I was there. Does that mean that I intended to kill anyone? What would the police think? It doesn't really matter. Because you're not going to tell them. Rod, don't look at me like that. I love you, Rod. You're not going to tell them, Rusty. But Rod, I love you. What do you know about love, you silly child? Whom do you think would... There's no one here. The door to the hall's open, though. Could be outside by now. Any idea who it was? No, but I, I gather whoever it was didn't like me. Oh. 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 That was meant for my head. But I, I guess I'm lucky. It won't show nearly as much there. Better get Mrs. Carlin a brandy. Get a good seat. I'm going to call Mike. What this house needs is a big, fat policeman. Oh, Mike isn't in yet. I... I talked to a secretary on the phone just before you screamed. 
Oh, a nasty weapon. Oh, Rod, it might have had fingerprints on it. I didn't think. Rod. Yes? Why did you come back? I wanted to tell you something. Why, well, you seem frightened. Don't come near me. Does this make you feel any better? Get this ghastly thing away. You don't honestly think I'm capable of anything like that, do you? Oh, no, Rod, I don't really believe it. Anyway, with Helen gone, I don't suppose you'd have a very good reason. I lied about Helen. I became convinced she did want me to kill you. And, well, perhaps I'm hypersensitive. Women who contemplate murder bore me. So I... Fuck. I seem to remember you phoning her when I came back from the cemetery. To tell her we were through. I thought she had killed you, and I wanted to confront her with it before I went to the police. You know, I've had a pretty tough time since the farm. I'm full of lumps. I... Oh, thank you, Jeffers. Uh-oh. I did it again. You better get Mrs. Carlin another brandy. Make it two. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm so thoughtless and selfish and inconsiderate. Don't be maudlin. There's enough brandy for all of us. No, it isn't just the brandy. What I wanted to say, Barbara, is that... Well, that isn't a very pretty compliment. I'm awfully glad to see you alive. Well, I'm glad somebody feels that way. Look, honey, after we get all this stuff straightened out, you think there might be another chance for us? Oh, I don't know. We were having trouble even before Helen and George. Oh, but that was rusty. Why, she's tried all along to break us up. Remember those arguments we had about the Greg party and the papers I lost? Why, that little rattlesnake at Bobby Sox engineered all of those misunderstandings. Rod. Why, she did. She told me so herself. And there's no telling how many times she maneuvered us into a row. What that child needs is a psychiatrist. I should have taken her to one long ago. Let's not worry about Rusty now. What about you and me? What do you say to him? Another chance. A nice long chance. Forty or fifty years. Miss Rusty is here with the police. Holy smoke, I forgot. You called the police? Oh, no, Rusty went for them. She has some idea in her head that she saw me at the stable the night of the fire. And, well, she's apt to say a lot of crazy things. But you'll stand by me, won't you? Rod, is that why you said... Oh, no. No, I meant that, Barbara. You've got to believe me, I... Rod. you have a one-track mind, Rusty? Now we'll see if I'm crazy. Good evening, gentlemen. You're just in time to be too late for an attempt on my wife's life. Who did it? I don't know. The lights were out. Oh, the light's always out. You know he did it. Why do you lie? Where did this attempt take place? In my room. Have a look, boys. Jeffers, would you show them, please? I'll come, too. One moment, Mr. Carlin. I'd like to find out a few things about this woman who was burned. This young lady says that you were... I was at the fire. And I was. I had reason to believe someone wanted my wife out of the way. Who? Oh. I'd better not answer that till I consult my attorney here. Oh, gentlemen, please, won't you come into the living room? I came as soon as I got your message, Rod. Are you all right, my dear? Yes, thanks, but Rod doesn't seem to be doing so well. The gentleman seems to attach some importance to Rusty's story that I was at the stable the night of the fire. Were you, Rod? Say, whose lawyer are you? I was there all right. I was uneasy that night. I expected Barbara home shortly, and knowing that she'd go to the stable first, I, I went down there to see that no one was waiting for her. Go on. Well, I checked to see that the stableman was with an easy call. Oh, yes, the whip business my sister-in-law makes so much of. I did pick it up, just in case anyone was there who shouldn't have been. No one was, so I went back to the house. And a few minutes later, I saw a woman go into the stable. 
Evidently, it was Helen Lawrence, although I thought it was my wife. A few moments after that, the stable was in flames. Go on. But there's no one to go. Perhaps my sister-in-law might be able to... With pleasure. You followed Helen into the stable. You hit her with that whip handle. Rusty. You don't want to believe it because you know he thought it was you. But I saw him. Well, I guess that's all we need. Rusty, weren't you at all surprised to see Barbara today? Of course, I thought she was dead. Then you didn't see that it was Helen Lawrence who went into the stable. No. No, it was dark. But it was light enough to see Rod. Yes. I mean... What do you mean? It wasn't light enough to identify anyone outside the stable. How did you see me strike a blow in the complete darkness inside? Well, I... Then you didn't see the blow struck? No, I... And you didn't see Rod go into the stable at all? It was Rod the first time I know. Oh, I've admitted that. But it could have been anybody who went in after Helen. Yes, no. I mean, oh, you're all against me. Young lady, if I find that you've been lying to me. I wasn't lying. I, I, I think I... Stop hammering at her. She's upset, confused. Can't you see she's not well? You think I'm crazy, too? Oh, no, dear, of course I don't. When anybody's upset, they're liable to misinterpret things. Like... Well, I've tried to do things for you because I loved you, and well, they've just turned out wrong. Do you hate me? No, dear. Even Rod hates me. No, dear, he doesn't. He's very fond of you. He always upsets people he's fond of. Oh, Rusty, dear, please. <gasps> Rusty. Well, at least you realize you can't depend on anything her child says. She's obviously emotionally unstable. But interesting. Well, the butler says this poker was used. Want to check it for prints? That won't do you any good. My husband picked it up after the attack. Oh, he did, huh? Convenient bit of carelessness, wasn't it? All things considered, Mr. Carlin, we'll have to take you with us. Don't worry, old man. I'll come along with you. I'll be all right, Mike. You'd best stay with Barbara, though, well, if you prefer. How darling, I seem to be always throwing you at another man, don't I? You think he'll be all right, Mike? If he's innocent. Dinner is served on the terrace, madam. Oh, thank you. I, I won't be a minute. I'll just change. I can't eat. Are you quite all right, Barbara? Why doesn't Rod telephone? Oh, they'll probably keep at him all night. Can they do that? I should have gone with him. Oh, he'll need ice. I'll ring. No need to disturb the servants. I told Jeffers to send them all off to bed. They seem worn out. Of course. You seem tired yourself, Barbara. Shall we go inside? Of course not. I, I never contemplated murder against my wife or anybody else until the last 30 minutes. How did you find out it wasn't your wife that you buried? Glad you asked me that. I had incontrovertible proof. She walked in and ate my lunch. Oh, don't you guys ever go to bed. I turn into a pumpkin at midnight. Mr. Carlin, I keep this job by doing it well. And this sort of questioning is part of it. Now, if you'll just confine yourself to answering our questions, you're doing remarkably well, Barbara. I admire you. I'm one of those unfortunate women who can neither swoon nor have hysterics. But then I don't suppose there's anything to be upset about. Isn't there? Of course, you know they're going to exhume Helen's body, don't you? Well, that's hardly an ordeal for me, as long as I don't have to do it. Your story about being at Arrowhead when the murder took place. Is that going to hold up? Do you mean they'll think I... Who had a better reason for killing him? But, Mike, I can prove I was at the summer place. Oh. Anyone see you when you got there? Oh, I know. 
No, it was late. I went right to bed. Nobody saw you until the next morning? No. No, that's right. Oh, Mike, it would look bad. It does. Well, you don't think that I... Then staying away until after the funeral was over. Very clever, Barbara. Mike. No, listen, Mike. Somebody tried to kill me tonight. Did anyone else see the assailant? That's an old dodge, Barbara. But I was hurt. <laughs> you don't think I tried to... Oh, it isn't a question of what I think, my dear. It's a question of what everyone else will think. When they exhume Helen's body and find the back of her skull crushed by a hammer, they're going to look for the person most likely to have wanted her dead. A hammer? Rusty said Rod had a whip. How do you know Helen was killed with a hammer? Well, I... I assumed that some weapon near at hand would have been used. Naturally. Naturally. Oh, I think I'd like some ice. Um, I'll, I'll ring for Jeffrey. Don't bother him. I'll get it for you. I can manage. No, we'll, uh, we'll go together then. I promised Rod not to leave you alone. Oh, I'll carry them. No, oh, no. I insist. Well, I've answered that a dozen times. But cops, you guys have an awfully short memory. But there's nothing wrong with our sense of smell. There's something mighty fishy about this. Yeah, there are other reasons why a man like you might want to kill his wife. Hey, who handles the money in your family? My wife does, and our attorney, Michael Dunn. How much insurance do you carry on your wife's life? I have no idea. Policies are at Mike's office. Suppose we find out. Anybody in his office now? I presume his secretary's there. We're going to work tonight. Call her. That's your trouble, Barbara. You never want people to do anything for you. Always want to do everything yourself. Before you came, I took care of everything for Rod. I handled his social life, took care of his domestic affairs. Oh, this is Mr. Carlin. Would you be so good as to look up my wife's life insurance policies and give me the total amount? Why, yes, Mr. Carlin, right away. By the way, I haven't been able to give Mr. Dunn your message. He hasn't come in yet this evening. Oh, that's curious. Hey, what are you doing? Mike said he came to the house because he had received my message. But what about the insurance? Then how did he know that anything happened at home if he didn't receive it? Well, we're not interested in that. No, but don't you see that... Get that he... girl back on the phone. Let's find out about this insurance. It, uh, it seems to be stuck. I'll call the cook. I don't go to all that trouble. I'll get it for you. Maybe it needs defrosting or something. I guess I'm not very strong. Of course you're not, Barbara. You're a woman. There are so many things you should leave to a man. Without Barbara running things, he could have sold away a fortune for himself, and I never would have known. Evidence? Rusty saw a man follow Helen into the stable. She thought it was I. Mike and I are the same build. And tonight, in the dark, in Barbara's room, why, he knows that house as well as his own. He didn't need any message to tell him that Barbara had been attacked. He was the attacker. Well, it's a very interesting theory, but purely academic. Academic? My wife's home alone with that killer. Come on. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Carlin. Finding out who the killer is is my business. After all, the district attorney didn't appoint me to do this office because he liked the way I wear my hair. I went to college for years and I read a great many books to learn how to get the information I do. Why, once... Are you going to sit there and tell me your life story? He may be murdering her. No harm driving out, would there be, Mr. Brighton? Well, I don't know. 
One of the first things you learn in modern criminology is that needless physical effort on the part of the investigator Shall we play another game? I thought it bored you. Well, I... Something to do until oh, we... Barbara, you're a wreck. Really, my dear, you take too much interest in too many things. You need a long rest. Well, I... I'm not really tired. I, I, I guess I'm just worried about Rod. I think I'll call him. I wouldn't advise that. You wouldn't? Why not? I mean... You'll never put you through to a man being questioned. Oh, of course. How stupid of me. It's chilly, isn't it? I think I'll run upstairs and get a sweater. that. Go ahead. Scream. That's one of the advantages of money, Barbara. The servants' quarters are far removed from your own. Money buys you privacy, sets you apart from the crowd, keeps you alone, even when you don't want to be. I can get my briefcase, will you? Yes. cigarette while reading in bed. Perhaps even suicide. Can't you drive any faster? Now, Mr. Carlin, traffic precautions are for the benefit of the community as a whole. What do you suppose would happen if each individual citizen were to ignore his social responsibility? Shut up! You're crazy, Mike. Crazy. I know you did it. It isn't as neat as I'd like. But you leave me no alternative. You know too much, Barbara. You'll never get away with it. I'd have gotten away with it the first time if you'd come to the stable instead of Helen. I'd have gotten away with it tonight if Rod hadn't been here. This time it's going to work. You see, I know as a lawyer, fire is so convenient in destroying evidence, even including the slight bruise that's going to be necessary. Come in. I'm leaving, but I've got to talk to you before I go. Today, when you said that you... that you loved me... There's nothing to talk about. I, I hate you, just as you've always thought. Now go on, get out, get out! Noble gesture, Barbara. Mike! Your sister tried to save your life, Rusty, but you're just what I need. Oh, Barbara. Pity this reunion came so late. People are going to think you killed your sister. And of course, I can't leave you alive to disillusion. Rusty, get out!
some brandy quickly? You kids, don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. I'm going to be running things from now on. I'll be a new man. <laughs> I guess I've been rather domineering. I'm going to try and change, too. I think I've lost a complex. Well, I'm the one who's really going to change. I'm going to be so dependable and unselfish. <laughs>